Hi guys, welcome to our podcast and today we're going to be talking about our California and Mexico mission trip. So we thank you guys for your prayers and your support. We appreciate it and uh, you know, look forward I look forward for you to, you know, and be encouraged in this and also uh, you know, stay tuned for the whole video as I'm giving explanation of uh, different details, different locations and different pictures of places we went to. So with that being said, uh, my family and I had an amazing opportunity uh, in uh, April to, uh, uh, well, it was March going into April, going five, about five, four or five weeks going into California mission trip. Uh, you know, we were able to go there for about four or five weeks. My family mainly did homeschooling, my wife and my two kids. And then also I was able to uh, do a mission trip where I was helping uh, Victory Outreach, and this is Victory Outreach is like Teen Challenge. This is where homeless uh, come from, uh, come there. Uh, drug dealers or drug users come there. Uh, it's rehab, but it's biblical base. So this is where they're using prayer, they're using meditating on the word, they're using deliverance. You know, casting out of demons. Uh, they're they're using all this uh, to deliver and to keep uh, people to also build up new routines where they're consistently now praying, reading of the word, and then also in within a house, you got about uh, 12, I think about 12 to 16 men that stay, or there's another one that's only for women. So I was going to the one for uh, the men in California around LA Carson area. And so over there, I was able to lead Bible studies, uh, lead encouragement, uh, get to know some of the guys, get to encourage some of the guys. It was, it was really great. It was really awesome. Uh, my brother, uh, my brother went to that program my, his, himself. Also, to uh, with Rescue and Revive, we also went to that in Minnesota, where we were able to uh, give the gospel to the men and 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 lead Bible studies. And then we actually stayed a night there in these bump beds. Uh, so I know how it, how it feels, and it was not comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Is it, you know people snore, some people snore. Um, the smells aren't so good. And, and you know, I'm 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 from the hood. I'm from the streets. You know, I, I already know, and that's the, the 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 demographic of some of the people I minister to are still from the hood, still from the streets. So that's what we do. Uh, but anyway, it was a it was a pleasure to work with uh, Frank, uh, brother Frank over there, doing a great job. Shout out to him, and uh, being able to minister to the guys. I would minister with them about two days a week, and then there was one particular day too where we really did some outreach together. So we're getting guys and, you know, really encouraging them on evangelism, going over Bible studies, um, actually helping them to develop their testimony. Uh, and then we were going out to the streets. We went out to Skid Road. Skid Road is way worse than Rochester, New York. That's streets upon streets upon streets of homeless. So we gave out water bottles. We gave out care packages. We gave out gospel tracts. Uh, we also were telling people, about Jesus Christ. That's the most important thing. One guy, when we stopped him, we were like, we went over there and he's like, look, I'm going to be honest. I gave him a track. The, the Holy Spirit was just giving me words for him. He said, I need to hear everything you're saying. He said, I was on my way to pick up my paycheck and go buy drugs. I'm being honest. That's the honest truth. And so he told me and I just kept giving him the word. And I said, sir, you have a decision to make. This is the way the Lord is speaking to you today. This is your choice. You give your life to Christ. You don't, you know, this is on you. And, you know, uh, are you going to still buy drugs or you're not? Right now, too, also, we're, we're giving you this uh, 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 rehab facility uh, through uh, the Victory Outreach. That's up to you if you want to take that or not. Uh, so he took the information. I don't know whether he did or didn't uh, buy drugs and stuff like that, keeping them in prayer. Uh, but we, we gave, I don't know, a couple hundred tracks, many tracks out. We gave out some of them as much out of our food supply that we had that day. Um, and so the, the the saddest thing too, there were two people there that they said they they were backslidden. And that was so, so sad. You can see they knew about the Lord and their drugs are taking such a toll. And one lady had told me like, you know, uh, when she wanted, I went over the gospel with both people and many others. One of them said, can you keep, keep please um, keep my family in prayer and my kids in prayer? And I could only imagine, she probably haven't seen her kids in years. You know, who knows? And I was praying that the Lord would rise her up for her to be able to see her family, you know. Um, so, yeah, uh, Skid Row was huge. Also, too, another big one, Hollywood. Hollywood is not what the movies and music videos make it out to see. Um, I, I did record some footage. 
uh, there's there's homeless people laying on those stars on the, on the sidewalk. Literally. They're laying on those stars. There's garbage everywhere. It's not like with the movies and mu music videos. What they do is they clean a section. And then they put the, the you know, a nice, make it look nice and stuff. But uh, the real Hollywood, they're on the streets laying down. Hollywood Boulevard. Um, I was able to talk to some homeless, minister to them, buy some pizza, uh, give it to them, feed them, give them the word of God, um, you know, and, and really encouraging them. And so that, that was, that was really, that was really touching. Uh, everything over there too is like an hour away. It's like, you know, Rochester, we're used to 15, 20 minutes. Everything's like an hour. Um, and the traffic, they got more lanes too, six, seven lanes. And it's still just a lot of traffic, uh, to get around. Uh, so logistically i would usually choose one location and then we would go i would go with a team or i would go by myself i would be leading these teams uh with that being said uh la harbor christian church is uh the, the second ministry i was assisting la harbor christian church is a church that uh they're passionate for jesus they're passionate for uh doing acts of service but not strong at giving the gospel of jesus christ uh that was pretty absent the pastor would do it from time to time. And shout out to Pastor Jason. I thank you for the uh, opportunity if you're listening to this. Uh, but, you know, he would do some outreach sometimes at the college and recording uh, stuff like that. Some giving of the gospel. But to get his church involved has, has been a, a huge hard task for him. But with that being said, we were able to go and preach and teach and do seminars. Uh, why give the gospel? Answering all kind of questions that people had like, what if people reject me? What if people don't want to talk to me about Jesus? What about when do they give their life to Christ? Or how long does it take? I mean, these are these are great questions that, you know, I have wrestled with. I think we all have from time to time. Uh, so answering these things one by one, uh, but getting them into development too, to be able to give out gospel tracks, like they weren't doing that. So now they started doing that. Also care packages with the gospel tracks in them. Care packages are food items for the homeless. Uh, so they were learning these concepts. And uh, they, some of them excelled. Some of them did very well. Uh, some of them just started giving out tracks like crazy. Um, you know, one youth was amazing. Youth was, uh, his name is Theo. He's, I believe, Indonesian. And he would go ahead and uh, give out, when I taught him about tracks, I was talking to somebody in Spanish. He just went out and started giving tracks to everybody. So it was uh, really, really incredible. It was a really great thing. Some of the other people, too, were doing that as well. Um, and so I'm very, very pleased to see that. My son preached his first message over there. Wow. My son is 16, wow. and he, he preached his, his first message. It was uh, uh, amazing to see that. We got that recorded, too. We looked to put that on with some, uh, uh, you know, some pictures as well. He did a great job. Um, he did better than me in my first time. I, honestly, honestly, he really did. He, uh, he had the message uh, tightly knit. He had the message stayed on point, and uh, so it was really, really good the way he did it. Uh, he did about 15, 20 minutes. I thought he would have been teaching way longer than that. He kept on asking my wife and I for many uh, verses and uh, different pointers and different tips. And he took hours looking at the Bible. Hour, and I'm like, Lord, before he did, I'm like, man, may he not take a whole hour. I said, bro, you can't take a whole hour. And he was controlled. He used the Holy, the Holy Spirit and he was in control. You know, it was really great to see him. He also raised up in evangelism. He shared the gospel more than ever before. Not only did he give out tracts, but this time he was also uh, um, initiating conversations of the gospel, you know, asking people questions about the afterlife, about Jesus. Uh, so I'm very, very pumped and excited about that. He did a great job. Uh, my wife also assisted me too. We went to Oceanside uh, in San Diego area to be able to preach the gospel at the pier, the beach pier. Uh, so she did a great job. We did a great job ministering to people. We found a group of kids that were skipping school so <laughs> on a Friday and uh, there were six of them and I said you guys are skipping school huh they said yeah I can't even lie to you I said all right I get it man so check this out and I, I they stayed with us 30 minutes they heard the whole explanation of the gospel of Jesus uh, we gave them gospel tracts we gave them some literature uh, you know pointing them to Christ and uh, things like that so it, it was it was really really awesome um, we were also able to go to um, La, uh, well, La Harbor Christian Church to California State Fullerton. This is a huge D1 college in California, a huge school, uh, thousands upon thousands of students. Uh, so we were able, secular school at that. So we were able to get the gospel of Jesus Christ. We were able to set up a table. 
give out gospel tracts for people that were the first time giving out the gospel to others. I was like, hey, look, just smile, say hi, how you doing? Here you go. And 90% of the people took the tracks, you know, for me and the others uh, that went alongside. Uh, it was good. I, so for some people that were asking questions, I would say, hey, if they ask you a question, that's what the person you talk to. You know what I mean? Don't worry about trying to talk to everyone. Uh, and they did a great job. They did a great job uh, growing. Um, it, was, it was really awesome. The kids were very receptive there. The college kids were very, very receptive. Uh, so it was really good. Uh, so LA, we did Skid Road, talked about that one. Uh, we went to Brea Mall. So Brea is very close to uh, 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 La Harba, Christian Church, La Harba area. Brea Mall, we went there and we were able to break up in groups of twos. Uh, there were about seven of us, eight of us that went. Uh, we were group breaking up and we were giving out gospel tracts and having the gospel conversations with people. And um, my son did a great job there. Everybody did a great job. Uh, one man was playing, he, he looked like he was the owner of a piano station or like selling different pianos. And he asked and he was like, one of the brothers was having a great conversation with him. And I told him, I said, hey brother, now you gotta, you gotta flip this over to talk about the Lord somehow. You've been talking to this guy good, you initiate, but how do you do that? And so he, he looked at me with the guy because the guy went uh, to get him a business card about the pianos. And so when he came back, he says, he says, Julio says, I got to talk to you about God somehow or something or give you a gospel track. He goes, did you read his shirt? What do you think it means? And I had the one that says lost souls matter. So that, that started the conversation and then I got involved. A long story short with this, with this one guy, um, he lacked conviction of sin. He didn't see himself as being like a homeless man. Uh, his life is that bad. Um, you know, he's probably the only, probably makes good money, you know. And um, I, I went over sin with him and I was talking about lying and stealing. I went over commandments. He said, yeah, that's, that's, that's wrong. Yeah, but anything could be a sin. Even the, you know, uh, taking down a tree and making one of your cards to give away. You're taking the life of a tree. And I looked and I smiled and I said, sir, that's not what Jesus teaches. That's not what the Bible teaches. That's not a human life. A tree is not a human life. Uh, that's not sin according to the Bible. Uh, and then I, I went in and I said, sir, I see you lack conviction of sin. Uh, and I said, we will we pray and we will talk about that. And after 30 minutes, you know what I did? I paused and I smiled and I shook his hand and I said, I thank you so much for this conversation. I gave him the track and that was it. And there's a There's a time to learn when uh, you don't want to spin your wheels with people, you know, and I've been growing in that area. Uh, but yeah, it was still a great conversation at the Brea Mall. Um, San Diego was very receptive. It's a beautiful city, but they also have uh, homeless there as well. So we were able to give out the homeless packages as well there. 